You hate to destroy good latte art, but you know, you gotta do it to enjoy the coffee. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, my name is Dalton. I ride and race bikes, and I bring it to you right here on YouTube. A couple months back, I bought a state black label V2, and I made this video, or this video, breaking down the components and a few of the upgrades I wanted to make on the bike in order to make it track ready. I also talked about a few upgrades I was gonna make in the long term as I started racing upper categories here at our local San Diego Velodrome. Fast forward a few months later and I managed to make my way from the C to the A category and I've been racing with the big dogs. Now, I've seen some success on the track, really excited about that. Of course, I didn't wait those few months to actually make these upgrades, so I've been racing my bike like this for a while and I have a little bit of experience with it in its current setup. So today, I'm gonna be walking you through each individual component one by one and you can see exactly how my bike is set up, ready to race at the velodrome pretty much every night. First thing is first, and this is actually something I went over in my previous video, is I immediately swapped the saddle out. So I'm currently running the Shimano Pro Stell saddle. I didn't need anything special. I went with like the base version. I don't need these freaking carbon rails, BS, and all that stuff that they offer you. All I needed was something that would fit my sit bones and not hurt my rear end. So the next thing we're gonna talk about actually is the cockpit. If you remember the very first breakdown video, I actually went out and I ended up having to buy my own set of drop bars. So I bought the Zip Service Course 38 centimeter bars and those were fine for the time being, but they are road bars. Since then, I've swapped out the stock 90 millimeter stem for a 130 millimeter zip service core stem with a negative 17 degree drop. In addition to that stem, I'm running the 3T Scotto bars. The combination of the deeper reach on the Scottos along with that big 17 degree drop, as well as the additional length from the 90 to the 130 mil really has helped me get in a really aero position. And overall, I don't feel like I'm impinging my hips at all. My hip angle is still good and I can still deliver power, no problem. I've actually put down some of my best powers of the year on the track. I managed to do almost 900 for 30 seconds and I peaked at almost 1400, which are pretty high numbers for me across the board. So absolutely no problems in the power department and I'm super happy with this cockpit setup. The next main component of this bike is gonna be the wheel set. So as you will see, they are just blank, no name Taiwanese carbon. I actually got them from a teammate of mine, secondhand, shout out Kevin for the wheels, super awesome hookup there. Since I got these wheels, I actually removed all of the decals on them. So now they're just basically matte black carbon. And honestly, I love that look when they're on the bike, especially out at the velodrome for race night. I think the bike looks super grungy overall. And honestly, I love that look. The front is obviously a tri-spoke. And then in the rear, I'm running a full on disc for most race nights. I do still have the black label rear wheel and I use it as a training wheel or when I'm running a lighter gear and warmups, then maybe like a sprint gear or something on Kira at night. The one thing about this rear disc that I kind of dislike is I actually had an 11 speed hub on it when I first got it. Now I swapped that to the track fixed gear hub and ended up having to switch out the cones and everything else. Now I was having problems with the cones initially and I was really struggling with getting them tight and having them stay tight. Since then, I think I have that issue worked out. However, the issue I am still having is that my track nuts in the horizontal dropouts keep wanting to walk. So they walk forward and really that screws up my chain tension. So then I'm all over the place. However, I did race the last Tuesday night, uh, which is the A category racing night. And I was able to get the disc dialed in and got my chain tension set and everything was good to go. So I may need to do some additional work on the rear disc in the future or swap that out in the upcoming months, but it's pretty much the end of track season at this point. So maybe there's no need. And I know you're probably thinking, wow, dude, you can't get your cones lined out. Wow, dude, you can't get your wheel to stop walking. I thought you were good at bikes and stuff. Well, guess what? I never claimed to be a bike mechanic, all right? Leave me alone. All right, guys, but in all seriousness, the last piece of this bike that we need to talk about and perhaps the thing that changes most often is the drivetrain itself. Now, if you guys are familiar with track bikes, then you'll totally know and understand that your chain rings and your cogs and your chain and everything is gonna change based on the night that it is, right? So what type of racing are you doing? Is it mass start? Is it sprint night? Basically, all of the above influence what type of gearing you need to be running. 
So right now on the bike, what I have is a 61 tooth front ring and that is by Affinity and I absolutely love their chain ring so far. I have had absolutely no issues with them at all. As a key point, I do have a 60 tooth stone chain ring somewhere around here. Ha ha! On top of that, I do have a uh, 59 tooth Affinity as well right here in the front. And then, uh, like I said, 60 tooth stone and then, oh, uh, I guess I shouldn't leave this one out. I've got a 52 FSA that I was running on the bike, um, basically right after I swapped it from its stock 48 ring. Now, the 48, I will probably never put back on this bike, but in the event that I need the 52 um, for commuting or something, I don't know, maybe that would be fun. Uh, this is what I would probably slap back on there. But for racing, these bad boys do the trick along with the 61 that is already on the bike. I'm doing this all one-handed because I'm drinking coffee. Also, I'm drinking coffee and it's like 7 p.m., so probably not a good idea. In addition to the chain rings, I have quite a few cogs. Now, these are important because this is basically the quickest way to change your gearing. You don't have to deal with the five bolts on the front. You just swap these bad boys on your rear hub and you're ready to go. So I run a 13 through 17 tooth cog. Most of my cogs are actually on wheels of some sort somewhere. Uh, so the important thing here is just knowing that I've got a lot of these and uh, I've got all different sizes of these as well. So. Keep that in mind, typically I'm running the 6117, it's about 97 gear inches for you track nerds. And that's pretty much my mass start gearing on Tuesday nights. If uh, we have a Kieran night or it's a sprint night or something like that, I'll bump it up to like 102. Uh, if it's big dog Kieran night and everybody's going fast and we're doing 40 miles an hour on the track, then I will typically bump it up to like 108. Don't tell anybody. One thing I do want to talk about also is the fact that I have a 116 link chain on there. Now I did, did pull a few links uh, out of the Azumi chain that I'm running and it's fresh and gold. I actually want a gold and black, but you know, I don't know. I'll just run the gold one. It is what it is. Get over it. It looks fine. Gold and black, classic color combo. What do you want from me? I don't know. Yeah. And last but not least, Asioma power pedals, boom. All right, folks, well, that's all the current components I'm running on the state black labeled V2. That is my race setup. Now, just to talk briefly about how I feel about this race setup overall, I will say, obviously, there are stiff, fast, aero carbon bikes out there. But all in all, I'm into this bike like 1500 bucks, maybe. All in with all the parts, all the chain rings, drivetrain, everything. And realistically, I can't say that I found a more affordable alternative. Now, my LA Sprint and you know the State Black Label, you can feel a little bit of difference in like sprint power and flexibility and everything in the cranks. And honestly, I don't know if that's bottom bracket and the reinforced welds on the LA Sprint, which is my road race bike, or if it's just the crank arms on the State Black Label. So the next thing to go on the State Black Label will probably be crank arms. Now in the long run, am I gonna keep this frame? Am I gonna keep this setup? Is this the end all be all for track racing? Depends on how serious and how good at this I get. Realistically, starting out and for this year, this has been a great option. So if you're looking to start on the track and you're looking for the perfect bike for it, I would say the State Black Label will probably do the job. Realistically, if you wanna make all these upgrades, you can, but the stock setup that I talked about and broke down in the initial component video, that'll do you just fine as well. Maybe the Affinity is a good option as well. I know a couple guys are racing that, but all in all, state black label, you guys killed it. It's raceable, do what you want on it. I don't know, go fast in circles, hipster NASCAR baby, rock and roll. I'll see you again soon. That's the breakdown. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button, share it with more people on YouTube, help my channel grow. And I will see you guys soon. Take care.